Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of Hillbilly Select Reviews. Today I'm going to do something interesting. I took a tour and there's a video I made on Artisan uh, Distillery. It's in Crestwood, Kentucky. It'll be under my uh, distillery tour playlist. Very interesting place. They do bourbon. Uh, they'll make bourbon uh, for people, for distilleries just starting out that aren't capable of making their own yet, that don't have the equipment, that are just starting out and they want to get started. They give them their mash bill, they have all these mash bills and you pick one and they'll bottle your bourbon for you. They also make their own brand. Well, one of the, the biggest one that they make is for Jefferson's. You've all heard of Jefferson's. They make the oceans, they make all kinds of bourbon. Uh, and they do their brand, uh, and they do other brands. Uh, and like I said, they make their own. And this is gonna get interesting of one of the whiskeys I picked up there. So, they're big into history there and one of the things they do is they have uh, of how bourbon used to get to the northeast to New York and down to New Orleans and stuff a long time ago well they retraced that journey and they took bourbon and they obviously they made some bourbon they stuck it in a barrel and put it in their warehouse then they stuck a bunch on a, sh a boat an, a, 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 an old um, steamboat and they took it to New Orleans and they retraced the path from like the 1700s and then went up to New York um, city, uh, uh, maybe Buffalo, New York, somewhere in New York and how they got it to the Northeast, the bourbon. And then you can buy a pint of each one or maybe it was even a half pint, it was $100. And you could see the difference. The one that was on the ship is so much darker and flavorful because uh, it sloshed around on that boat the whole trip and it really drew out a lot of that flavor from the wood that the other one just sitting in the warehouse did and it's very, very interesting. Uh, another thing they did, there's a, an alley, two alleys down here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, one's called Billy Goat Strut, and the other one's called Nanny Goat Strut. They're actually located behind Angel's Envy Distillery, right there. Well, a long time ago, they couldn't, um, this is all true, I work down here. I mean, I, these alleys are here and everything else. When, when before they improved and made the locks on the Ohio to raise the water and get navigation, there were certain times a year where they couldn't get over the, what they call the falls of the Ohio. It was shallow and it was rocky and they couldn't do it. Well, during that downtime, the time when they couldn't ship whiskey, all those whiskey distiller employees, um, and to be honest with you, there'd be the gamblers, um, prostitutes, it was a rough area, and they would have billy goat and nanny goat races on those streets. That's why those streets are actually named for that during the off, basically the off season when they couldn't ship anything. And they would gamble on these goats and it was even before Churchill Downs. So Louisville's always been crazy about racing of one sort or another. So what they did here is they named a, a whiskey after one of the streets. I'm sure they're gonna come out with nanny goat, but this one's billy goat. Let me show you how cool it is. This is the label. So they got um, a billy goat dressed up as a, um, you know, a gentleman, so to speak. Billy Goat Strut. And what's it say here? North American whiskey, 375 milliliters, 55% ABV, 110 proof, celebrating Louisville's first racing tradition on the Billy Goat Strut Alley. Is that what it says right there? The tr proof is right there. It's got a cork. It's got a stained, beautiful wooden top uh, to it, real cork, and then it's sealed up uh, real nice. This says, uh, proofed with natural spring water, so they brought it down from however high it was to 110. Uh, the back gives a little history of things. I um, guess you could read that. Uh, pause it and read it. And so I thought it was really cool, and it's got a really nice label. I like the way it's you know shaped in your hand like that. So what this is made of is, is interesting as well. It's Canadian whiskey. It wasn't made there. Canadian whiskey, they shipped down two different kinds, don't know where they sourced it. It's 40% of one type of Canadian whiskey. 40% another, and then 20% rye that they made at the distillery itself. Uh, I think this is, they only made so much of this. Uh, if I can get another bottle, I will we'll do a review on it real nice. Uh, I kind of want to keep one. I get stupid with this keeping stuff, but maybe if I can get two more bottles, I'll have to see. Uh, I can, uh, and I've said this before about some other stuff, and I never do it. I'd love to give away, um, and I do give stuff away, but I'd love to do something on this channel to give it away to, to subscribers and stuff. The only problem is I can't really ship it. I got a lot of people watch my channel from Canada and England and Australia, 
and then I have some from India and from uh, Ireland that I might have them from all over those kind of more than a few uh, Canada if I didn't mention that and <clears throat> I can't really ship this there uh, and I don't want to exclude them because it's not fair There's some real good friends real great supporters of my channel so I refuse to do anything for anyone that I can't do for them so for now that that I guess I can't do that but um, but it would be kind of cool uh, I guess I will just save these for gifts for people that are really in the bourbon that are special to me down the road uh, when this is no longer available to anybody uh, and then I will save it like I always do and say man I should try this man I should sell this man I should do a lot of stuff with this and let it continue to sit on the bar where no one will ever see it so <laughs> I thought this was interesting. I just filmed one of a first batch bourbon uh, that I got from Neely family. I did a distillery tour on them as well. And I bought two bottles signed by the um, master distiller. So I have two, so I have one to give away. Hopefully I'll be able to get another Billy Goat strut. And if they come out with some Nanny Goat strut, I'll be all over that as well. Thought you'd find this interesting. It's some of the fun stuff I do living here amongst all these distilleries. Almost every weekend I go to a distillery, I take a tour, I talk with them, I'm just, you know, I'm interested in the subject. So, I'm here in Kentucky, I've got these distilleries all over the place. This one where I got the Billy Goat is in the same damn near walking distance from my house. Um, so, that's it. Taking advantage of uh, being in the Napa Valley of Bourbon, alright? Um, it's no different than living in Scotland, I guess, around where all, where all distilleries are. Um, so, hope you enjoyed it. From Hillbilly Select Reviews, everybody, cheers. Have one hell of a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. Check out my playlist. Uh, a lot of things on there, but one of them is distillery tours, and I'm going to be adding that constantly because every time I go to a tour now, I mean, I've been to a million of them, but since I start the channel, I haven't. So I'm going to start filming them, put them on here. They're going to grow constantly, and I have some winery ones, too, from local wineries, and when I take trips, I always stop wineries. So they're all, they're all going to continually grow on these tours very interesting and I'm going to continue to pick up rare uh, whiskeys that can only be had at these places sometimes they come out you get lucky they have them boom they sell out uh, you get a first batch you get something like the Billy Goat Strut and you get lucky with it so I'm going to continue to do that so from Hillbilly Select Reviews everybody thank you thank you for watching